It's the biggest event in Team Tempin, the Ryder Cup of Bowling. The Weber Cup at Arena MK Milton Keynes and the Americans have established a convincing lead. From the very first session Europe found themselves chasing this year's tournament, the US winning five of the opening seven matches to start day two with a three-point lead. Pressure's on, no question about that. And at least he started off here with a perfect 10, and we'll be looking for a lot more of those, as will Team Europe. Just what can he add to it? Is it going to be a 269 to finish? Yes, it is. Normal service resumed then for Team USA there. And the Americans straight back down to business. The Truth Simonson partnership will look to go to work and carry on this red hot American streak. It's not must win time for Europe, but uh, they can't allow this gap to grow any bigger, can they? Go, baby. We're here to play this year. We're here to play. Let's go. It's another one to forget Team Europe. American dominance continues in the early going. And right now, the Americans are looking unstoppable. And that will do nicely, thank you. Well, he's in danger of making his 278 yesterday. Looked like a low score. Not a crisis yet, but uh, getting close to it. And this gap is growing alarmingly wide. A strike here from Williams puts Europe in good shape. And he's got the messenger to kick out that 10. Oh, you don't want to be doing that against Stu Williams. You might end up in the car park. I can tell you if he strikes here, he'll light up this, this arena. He's got it. He's done it. Is that a turning point in this year's Weber Cup? Oh, that was a thriller. Big ball, big frame. All or nothing. Must take all ten just to keep this alive. And he's left, he's left the corner ten. Well, 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 what a big win that is. And I tell you, Europe are clinging on by their fingernails here. Europe are building up some momentum. Well, Svensson's back on track. Here we are, dead level again. Huge pressure on the European skipper here. And that was a shocker. And I think that's the match gone. Wave the white flag, get me out of here. The Barrett has got some serious thinking to do. I mean, it takes something special to stand out head and shoulders above everybody else in a field as talented as this. And Anthony Simonson is doing that. This man is simply unstoppable right now. Back in business, back in cruise control. More joy for Team USA in the second session with another 5-2 win, stretching their overall lead to six points in this race to 19. The debutante Anthony Simonson showing why he's one of the hottest properties in bowling right now. The Americans haven't won the Weber Cup since 2012, but know another solid session could see them end day two with one hand on the famous trophy. It's all singles after the opening Baker match, with the session concluding with the captain's pick, where each skipper chooses one player from his team to bowl the final singles game of the day. Don Barrett will be hoping when he makes his choice, the gap between his team and America would have been narrowed. Let's find out if Europe can do that, starting with the Baker match. All these guys kind of get along well, so it, it were pretty interchangeable personality-wise, which wasn't always the case. Uh, so more it's about strategies and plans of attack than it's going to be uh, who likes who and who doesn't like who. It's one point for the win with 19 needed to lift the trophy. The matches are played over 10 frames and your commentators for this one are Nick Halling and Cass Edwards. There's certainly an awful lot of work for Team Europe to do tonight to just sort of regain some credibility and close the scores up. Well, first things first, they've got to win a session. They haven't come close yet. They've lost both of them 5-2. If they were to lose this one 5-2, the Americans would be uh, four wins away from reclaiming the Weber Cup. I also noticed on the uh, on the walk-ons that the Americans had a spring in their step, laughing and joking and, and rushing out, greeting the crowd. Uh, team Europe were slightly less... Um, 
exuberant and there wasn't that many smiles on their faces so it just might be a, a sign of the mental times that they're going through at the moment high fives and handshakes all round as you say they all know one another and this is the start of session three game one it's a baker system all players taking part and it'll be Chris Barnes who will get things underway. Played himself very sparingly in that last session. Just played one doubles match, the skipper, in his late 40s now. So he doesn't want to give himself too heavy a workload. So that's a very sensible management of his own abilities. Still in red-hot form himself. That's not a great start, though. He leaves himself what they call the bucket. But uh, comes into this one off, the, off, off a win in his home state, Lubbock, Texas. That was just last weekend. He is the reigning world doubles champion, along with Tommy Jones, he's one of his teammates here. So it's not like he's washed up, but I think he recognises that he's got to just limit how much time he's going to spend he's on actually the coming, lane. Nick, he's actually coming back from quite a serious back injury mm. a couple of years ago, and he's just got back into full-time bowling again. And that is a very nice spare. Difficult one to leave, difficult one to pick up. He's made it. So six berries, 16 pins under the world bowling scoring system. And it's uh, always best to get the low counts out of the way yeah. in frame one. Yeah, exactly. That was a low one. Well, he's not happy with himself there, is he? Barnes, not at all. Could be an early ball change. Yeah, especially with Williams getting off to the fly. Yeah, high fives around. A great shot from uh, Stu Williams, known as Beef Stew. It's his eighth Weber Cup. He's been a, a store of the time for of the team for quite some time now. And he's always been a great finisher. And always been a great team player as well. That's important. Just for the chemistry of the team. Simonson. Well, I don't think he's going to be leaving too many more open frames, is he? He's been, do he's been doing that all tournament, Nick. Well, apart from that first baker, he left an open. Well, that's right, but he's made up for it uh, yeah, with exactly. the previous 24 strikes before this match. He is so hot, the world's hottest player at this particular time. Just remember that was the question that was being asked of Simonson as Don Barrett looks to go to work here. Oh, no, 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 he's got that flush. Flush on the head pin. He's lost the line completely there. Cracky, difficult one there. Yeah, it's the three, four, six, seven, ten. Didn't he have this in his last match as well? This exact split. I think he did. Yeah, it is. Oh yeah, he had it in a doubles match with Jesper Svensson, right. who had to try and spare it as a left-hander, which was very difficult. It is makeable. Now he's got to get that ball very lightly to the right-hand side of the three pin on that right side of the lane. Hopefully, bounce it across. No. No, I'm afraid not. Low pin count as well. Everything wrong with that one. So that's not great. Um, when you're the captain, you feel that particularly painful. So Barnes didn't have a great one, but he managed to spare out. But uh, an open frame from Barrett. Yeah, a double from Troop here will uh, certainly put the Americans way out in front. And it's only frame three. That was a huge open frame for the European captain to uh, come up with on his first shot. Well, he's well, well, fortunate there, isn't I he? Was, oh, I wasn't quite sure whether that was going to be five, six or seven pins, and it ended up being ten. That's unbelievable. He doesn't care. <laughs> well, you get enough bad luck in this business. You take the good luck when it comes your way, and that was a big stroke of luck for Carl Troop, and he'll be the first to admit that. Yeah, a real sort of cascading chain reaction in the back end there, but they all count. A double for Team USA then. Yeah, double travel, 30 pins a time. And there you can see already. 11 pins up. Get over! He's got Whoa. it. He's got it. Yes, Slow for motion, but he got it. Yes, for Spence and takes a seven pin out. That's absolutely outrageous. He's left that pin all the tournament and eventually gets the messengers to take it out. Great looking shot. He will breathe a big sigh of relief after that. Because that, as you say, has troubled him. All tournament. 
So there's only nine pins in it after three frames. They're looking a bit more chirpy after that one, but here comes Tommy Jones. Oh, no. Oh, he lost the line there as well. Now, that is interesting. Well, it's a freshly dressed lane. It's got brand new oil on it. Goes down 41 feet. And there's three times as much oil in the centre part of the lane and there, as there is on the outside. They chose this lane pattern. Barnes had a bucket to deal with. He only hit six pins on his first. Simonson, of course, took the lot out. Troop got a very, very lucky strike. And this fella, Tommy Jones, has now left an open. Only one of the four Americans has looked comfortable on this lane right now. Uh, well, they're all smiling, but uh, no, they won't like that open frame, of course, and that's going to tighten the score up. But, but as, you, as you say, they, they picked the pattern. And there's three times as much oil in the centre as there is on the outside, so straighter may be greater. Well, even a nine spare would be enough for Europe to take the lead here. What can Martin Larson come up with? And uh, he doesn't get the nine spare, so if he cleans up here, it'll tighten up the differential. But uh, very interesting this, isn't it, that it's a shaky start all round. Yeah, maybe the uh, amount of oil is uh, uh, certainly affecting them to start with. And we can see on some of the bowling balls the, the amount of oil that's been picked up and great spare under pressure. You can see on the bowling balls the amount of oil that's being picked up and uh, that obviously affects the, uh, the track area that they're playing in. Welcome back to the Weber Cup for the second Baker match of this year's event. Little to choose between the two sides in the early exchanges. Oh, Barnes has left the eight. Ouch. To all intents and purposes, a great looking shot. An awful lot of power went into that between the one three and the five pin and the ball just drove straight through. Didn't get any action on that uh, eight pin whatsoever. Would certainly be considered to be very unlucky with that shot, but it can only be a spare. Yeah, he's a bit disappointed, and you can understand why. He's well, that's uh, two frames and no strikes for Barnes. He will be finishing on frame number nine, so he's got one more shot. Well, the man who bowled the best frame for Team Europe first time up was this man right here. A complete no-nonsense tear the rack to shred strike from Stu Williams. Can he tack on another one here? As Europe looked at edge in front. Nope. Well, nobody seems to be lined up at all, do they? High through the head pin for Stu Williams. Leaves two on the left-hand side, the four pin and the seven pin. The Englishman that now lives in uh, Phoenix in Arizona. Plays on the American tour on a regular basis. Takes the spare. Well, should we just let Anthony Simonson sort of say, OK, you got a strike. We don't need to see you, Anthony. This is going to be all ten and we know it. Yeah, let's just wait and see. <laughs> well, it's if he misses one, it's headline news. Man has been automatic. Well, well, well. Is that going to get kicked out? No, it's not. A little bit unfortunate there to leave that ten. Yeah, I couldn't quite get the messenger to come across the uh, six-pin jump right round it. And so there it stands, the lonely ten-pin. That is a very rare survivor from an Anthony Simonson onslaught at this year's Weber Cup. But it's going to pay the price right here. Taken out. But Europe still can't quite overhaul the Americans, but the Americans can't shake them off. And there's another opportunity for Don Barrett's team 
to get their noses in front here if they can strike. Strikes, though, have been at a premium. Both teams with just two thus far. Oh, Barrett with a real good opportunity here. If this takes all ten, Europe take the lead, and he's got very, very lucky to only leave one pin standing there because that was way too flush on the head pin. Yes, I can't quite understand it. None of these guys are really uh, getting lined up with this, this oiling pattern at the moment. Of course, it's changing all the time. So I mean, it may make a difference come game two, but at the moment, they all seem to be struggling. <laughs> nice spare means 19 pins. But we genuinely have no idea what's going to happen next. <laughs> we'll have to wait and see like everybody it, it, else. It, as you say, nobody's automatic at the moment. We've been six frames without a strike. But this is the, uh, the glory of Baker team bowling. Everybody takes part and you take your chances. So his troop. We're overdue a strike and it's come at last for Kyle Troop. That just loads up the pressure a little bit on Europe who have to match that now. Well, that's two strikes for Troop in this game. He gets two frames and bowls two strikes. He is such a solid, strong player, Kyle Troop. I mean, he might have been on the losing side the last two years in the uh, Weber Cup, but it's not because of his efforts. And did you notice all the other Team uh, USA boys are up out of their seats, mm -hmm. high-fiving? Svensson has matched it, so it's still too close to call. Yes, we're playing the left-hand side of the lane, the only left-hander in the tournament. So he shouldn't have too much disruption, disruption from the uh, any other bowling balls except his. Two pins, the difference. Frame eight, Tommy Jones. Oh, well, he's very lucky as well. Oh, this is uh, yeah, this is another shocker. <laughs> Just telling the other guys how much he missed his mark by because that ball crossed the head pin left hand side. He could have taken a strike there, but uh, just unfortunate uh, the six pins left standing could so easily have gone. A Brooklyn hit in the terminology of the, uh, of the game. Single pin spare to be dealt with here and another chance for Europe to get in front if they can strike out next time up. Seems that nobody wants to win this game, uh, Nick. And they can't have a draw. They can't have an honourable draw and a handshake. Someone's got to lose a point. Well, in the early going here of this evening session, it's the lane comfortably ahead on points at the moment. <laughs> Very much so. Lane is definitely winning. Chance here for two strikes in a row if uh, Martin Larson can bury one in there. Yes, and he does. And Europe take the lead. Thanks to a Swedish double. Nice to see high fives and all the players uh, getting up out of their seats. Wide angled shot. Light on the head pin, mixes them thin. Knocks the ball over. Ten pins, and Europe take the lead by nine. Well, that really forces Team USA to strike right here. And Barnes doesn't have a strike yet in this Baker. This is his third shot at it. Third time, the charm. Foundation frame, frame number nine. And the American captain shot a strike. Team Europe must do exactly the same. Great ball here, right in the one-three pocket. Carries all ten, no problem. They'll be happy with that. They must strike to stay in front, Europe. Anything else, they slip behind again, going into the final frame. 
So the heat now on Stuart Williams, who delivers terrific response from Williams. Strike just when you needed it. Three strikes in a row for Team Europe. Down on one knee and a lot of aggression there. Team Europe lead by nine. Tenth frame, both teams on a strike. Realistically, it's got to be a strike here. And it's Simonson to wrap it up. Well, he's the man to do it, if anybody is. Didn't strike last time, remember? Left the ten in the corner. <laughs> that wasn't going to happen twice, was it? Well, it gives him a fighting chance. A score of 232 for uh, Team USA. But it means Europe have to strike to claim the win here. Yes, indeed. It has to be a strike for uh, Don Barrett, the captain, to stand up. Anything less, and the point goes to Team USA. Close force fought match right down to the wire. Well, a big high-pressure ball right here. If it's a strike, it's a point to Team Europe. If it isn't, USA lead this battle for the Weber Cup 11-4. And all the pressure is on the shoulders of the captain. The biggest ball of the session of this game. Uh, he must be a strike. He's due, uh, he's due a strike, but he doesn't get it. He doesn't get it. It's a point for Team USA. And all of a sudden, it's gone very quiet. It's in incredible. The, in the it arena. really is incredible, and the pressure was so intense there. It's actually probably the best of the three balls he's bowled in this Baker, but it didn't do enough to take all ten. Well, it's a sickening start, this, for Team Europe. The Americans edging a little bit further in front. Welcome back to Weber Cup 19, where a frustrating start to the session has seen Europe concede further ground to the American juggernaut. US captain Chris Barnes is now talking to Hannah Wilkes. For a while there, it didn't look like anyone wanted to win that match. Yeah, all the guys were making a lot of moves around the lane and it was changing quick and uh, Baker's always the hardest because the most time in between shots. So there was uh, a lot of educated guesses going on and some of them worked out and some of them didn't. And you've picked a very challenging oil pattern this evening, haven't you? What's the thinking behind your choice? Uh, we went from the easiest one this morning to uh, one of the more difficult ones. And uh, it was more like the one that we picked last night. And I guess we went along that way. It's still a guess. And uh, a couple of our guys are having a hard time, too. They certainly are. Like I say, it looked like no one wanted to win that match. You're up against Dom next in the singles. Captain versus captain. How important is it for you to keep the momentum on your side and get another win? Well, as you've seen the last several years, uh, once Euro has got the, the momentum going their way, they've steamrolled them. So, you know, our job is just to keep them from, from winning a couple of matches in a row. Chris Barnes will hope to maintain the US momentum in the next match when he faces fellow captain Don Barrett. But first up, a quick refresher on the rules of temping. Tony Wrighton now explains. The lane is 42 inches wide and 60 foot long to the head pin, bordered by two gutters. The lane is applied with an oiling pattern, which reduces friction between the ball and the lane. Lane patterns can vary and can aid the bowler at times. The lane approach is 15 to 17 feet. There's a foul line between the approach and the lane. If a player touches or slides over this line after they've delivered the ball, it's called as a foul and no pins are scored. A full game is made up of 10 frames with up to two balls each frame. Knocking all 10 pins down with the first ball is called a strike. Scoring three consecutive strikes is called a turkey. 
if a bowler doesn't score a strike, a second ball is thrown to clear other standing pins. If successful, this is called a spare. Failing to clear all pins with two balls is called an open frame. Sometimes pins are left standing at opposite ends of the pin deck. This is called a split and often results in an open frame. If scores are tied after 10 frames in this tournament, players will bowl off a two-frame roll-off with the game scores scratched. The bowler's ultimate goal is a perfect 300 game which is the maximum 10 strikes in a row. The Weber Cup has seen six perfect games in total, the last two being by Team USA in 2013. So it's a 10 frame match with a strike worth 30 points and the maximum score being the magical 300. A spare is 10 points plus the pinfall of the first shot in the frame and actual pinfall after two shots in an open frame. Up now, the captain's clash in match 16. Weekend crowds are always bigger and there's always more energy in the building. And, uh, and now that they're behind, there'll be a little bit of a, of a fever pitch, I imagine, early on. as they, And I'm sure they're going to try and, and scratch and claw their way back in. You're going to see a lot more from that and a lot of us using the, the crowd to our advantage and really trying to put the pressure on the Americans knowing it's not just us on the lane, it's the 500 people here watching as well. Having lost two out of his three singles matches so far at this year's event, time to find out if Don Barrett can win a much needed point against his opposing captain Chris Barnes, who he faces twice in this session. Commentary from Guy Kaminsky and Nick Halling. Barrett has got to be looking at this saying, I've got to win both of these games against my rival skipper for Europe to have any chance of winning this, uh, w winning this session and win this session, they have to. There's absolutely no doubt about that. I mean, the pressure on Dom now must be absolutely immense. He didn't have a good baker. As this lane caused all sorts of problems, and uh, he was a bit so dead straight on the uh, head pin there, and that could have been anything there. Could have been a strike, could have been a spare. Yeah, also could have been a split too. Quite a few options of that ball. You can see he's still not sure where he should be playing in the 10th frame of that Baker match where he needed it. He got it a bit too far to the right and it didn't recover. And I wonder if that ball there was a result of that 10th frame from the Baker match. Well, Chris Barnes has been saying, we heard him in his interview there, talking about we wanted to make this lane condition as tough as possible. Is that because he gets the sense that his players are slightly more comfortable than the opposition players? Yeah, without doubt, they're right. They're riding the crest of confidence at the moment. And when it comes down to accuracy and skill, there's no one better than Chris Barnes. Great shot there. He's happy with that one. Just the ring 10. But you saw this morning when we had the wide open lane pattern, he brought out the big hitters, the power players. Yeah. And now it's time for a bit of skill and a bit of finesse, finesse a bit of accuracy. You'll see Chris Barnes stepping up to the plate. None of it incidentally seems to bother Anthony Simonson. I mean, you could lay a minefield down that lane and he'd just navigate his way through it. Yeah, when you're letting the ball go that good and you're winning everything you, you play in, uh, the kid thinks he can do no wrong. Very grounded kid. I mean, he's a kid compared to us, but he's, he's, he's not Mr. Big Time at all. He's a very humble guy, isn't he? Yeah, great personality. Barrett looks for the first strike, gets it. Yeah, that one looked really good for Dom. I think he would have enjoyed that. And I'm not sure whether we're not seeing much reaction out of Dom because he knows how important it is or just whether, whether he's really trying to focus on getting it, the win here for the boys. Well, they're under pressure. This is the first time that Europe have been under pressure in the Weber Cup for a long, long time. Barnes looking to match strike with strike. It's a nice clean pocket hit. 
muted applause, but respectful applause. Nobody in this crowd is anti the Americans, but you can hear how pro Europe they are. And Don Barrett said, we're going to need that energy from the crowd a little bit if we're going to get ourselves back into this. Without doubt. And, and you can see the crowd are itching to get into it. When we had that little a couple wins for Europe early on, I mean, this place was really buzzing. Oh, it was buzzing. It was a totally different vibe. Completely different. Yeah, they're just waiting for a reason to cheer. Well, is Barrett going to give him something to shout about? Yes, he is. Listen to that. Well, that looks much better there from Dom. Well, hopefully both players now are lined up and know what they're doing. It's a matter of executing. Yeah, this is strictly business and focus from Barrett. So Barnes has to match again. The two of them going stride for stride at the moment and staying that way. You know, Barnes isn't going to go anywhere quietly, is he? It's almost like both of them have just mentally just said, enough, enough with this lane now. We're going to start bowling some strikes, and they're both finding them. Yeah, they are. And then also they're starting to understand how the lane's playing, where to play it. And the difficulty of Baker when the lane's difficult and only throwing one every four frames, it's really tough. Here you get into bowl every frame. You get a good feel for what the lane's doing. And once these guys at this level get it together, I mean, the strikes start flowing. Yeah, absolutely. Expect to see plenty more. But what we didn't want to see from the European perspective was a split like that. Well, he dodged one early, didn't he? It could have been that first frame, could have been a split. Now he has got one. Yeah, and that's been his bad shot the whole weekend. We've seen that a few times where he's just um, got it inside and gone through the nose and split. Makeable, but my goodness me, it's a tough one. Just missed it. What he was trying to do was get the thinnest little slice of that to kick it over to that 10. There was absolutely no margin for error here. He had to just catch that perfectly on the edge. We might see some animation from Chris here. If he can really rup, ramp up the ante. Oh, he'll want to pour it on. I mean, if he can get a, a turkey here. He doesn't. Oh, look at that. Oh, that is extraordinary. How has that not fought? That's a break. That's a break for Team Europe. Make no question. Make no mistake about that. If we can see that again from the other angle, it's almost impossible it doesn't fall down. I mean, look, the first one doesn't get it. Here comes the second one. That's going to get it. And it's been stopped by the first one. The first one ran interference. That's incredible. Well, I'm sure Chris really wanted that strike there. When your player's down, you want to jump on them. Well, that's Barrett with life once again. Yeah, we've seen the whole weekend. Not much separation between these two teams. Yeah, except in the scoreboard. Scoreboards are looking so good. But the matches have been... Very, very close. Now, that was a really good clean pocket hit that on another day takes all 10. Yeah, good shot. But when you start chasing the game, you just grab it a bit more than you, you really want to, and that's what happens. When the swing's loose, free swinging, everything goes your way. Just remember... The Americans won the first Baker. Next up, they've got Anthony Simonson, who can beat everybody in this building, it seems, on his own, with his eyes closed. So if Barnes can get the win here, there's a very good chance this could be three points in a row for the Americans to open up this session. There's a really good chance for the captain. Oh. He's not oh. made a good shot there at all. Well, that changes everything again. And that's the thing about tough lane conditions, is that it magnifies bad shots. And unfortunately, that was just inside his target. And look at it, it's gone straight through the head pin. I mean, I'd say that's makeable, but it's, it's a one in a hundred shot. Well, this, you'd say, is tougher than the, uh, the Barrett split. Oh, without doubt. So the four six are hard to get out of there. Seven pins never a problem, but cutting the four pin onto the six is tough.
Welcome back to the Weber Cup, where the US currently leads Europe 11-4 in this race to 19. This is now match 16. Chris Barnes currently leading Don Barrett by a single pin. The nice thing about watching these matches, whereas before, if you made a mistake, you felt that the other team could shut you out. When so low scoring, you, you never oh. open it. Well, at 10, once again, a little rueful shake of the head there. He's thinking, well, what have I got to do to kick that out of there? that he's exactly sitting pretty right now. Yeah, both players just aren't getting the ball quite to the target. They seem to be a bit inside on their, their, the target they're trying to hit. Just missing a bit left. Well, this is all Barnes' fault. He chose this lane pattern. <laughs> well, he can have no complaints. He's, he's, he's dialed up an absolute stinker at the moment for everybody, it seems. Yeah, but it's all about winning points, not so much about the score. By putting points on the board. Well, a strike here opens up a gap. Potentially. If it's a strike, and it is. Well, the great shot there by Chris. But again, you, s you, you can see his body language, his reaction. He's finding this hard going. Yeah, because he's frustrated that he can't just get ahead enough that he can relax. You know, Every time that looks like he's getting in front, it comes straight back. Yeah, look at that. No smile, barely a fist pump. It's like, I got one. I'm just happy I got one. This is, yeah. this, this is the kind of game you just want to survive, get the win by any means necessary. Absolutely. Oh, oh can you believe this? Can you believe this? Three in Three. a row. Three in a row. I mean, that's brutal. And not one of them was a bad shot. Three great shots after that split. He really came back with three good shots. The difficulty now is when the lanes are so tough, you don't want to make a major change because you're scared of getting another big split. If this was a high-scoring game, you better believe Dom would have made a major change. But because he knows it's going to be low-scoring, he doesn't want to, he just wants to stay in touch. Well, still in touch he does, but if Barnes gets a double here, he starts to lose touch with only th three to go. The European perspective is very, very simple here. They don't want Barnes to strike because that might just put this match beyond them. Yeah, he goes a 20 pin lead with two frames to go. It's a nice, comfortable position. Oh, a chance for a second double of the match here for Barnes, which he takes with both hands. And he now has this one where he wants it again. No celebrations, no fist pumps, no smiles to his teammates. It's just get out of this, get the point. Yeah, it's one of those lane conditions that you can never get, you know, get get out there and really get boisterous because you, you're never sure where the next split's coming. What are the other guys thinking watching this? Because they've got to play this lane as well. Yeah, sure. And the nice thing about it is they're probably going to talk to Chris and say, you know, what's your feedback? What do you think? And I bet you all the guys are watching because they know they need to get as much information as possible. And likewise with the Europeans. Oh, do you believe this? Is it going to go? No, it's not. That's unbelievable. This is terrible, terrible luck for Don Barrett. Yeah, it's one of those cases when you just want it just too much, I'm afraid. He couldn't buy a break right now. I mean, how, how do you deal with this mentally? I mean, when you play a bad shot, yeah, you, you, you'll take ownership of it. But he hasn't played a bad ball in four frames, and he's left the same ten every time. How do you deal with that mentally? No, he hasn't. It's really tough. <laughs> and in addition to that, you've got the fact that they're so far behind on the scoreboard. Well, he just looks stunned. And there's nothing they can say. There's nothing anybody can add. Other than they all know they've got to deal with this lane as well. Barnes, if he can create a triple here, which he can't. That was uh, out of the pocket quite badly again, and he's lucky that he's avoided anything unpleasant. Yeah, this spare should be pretty routine. Every now and again, I've seen it chopped. Well, it does enough to keep Barrett in it, and Barrett is overdue. If he can strike out, He's going to force Barnes to 
Conjure up another strike, first of all. First things first. Oh, you heard Chris say two there. Yeah. He knew how close yeah. he was to taking the one straight back. He's not happy. He hasn't been happy all match. Yeah, look how relieved he is. So easy to chop that spare. I'm going to take the three pin out and leave the six pin behind. Well, the door is just a jar, just enough open to give a heaven a chance. If it's a strike, I can't believe it. that. No, it's not his night. You can see he tried to make a very small adjustment there just to try to get the ball to shape up a bit, but sooner come higher in the head pin. That's frustrating when you're bowling, you're like throwing four great shots. You try to make the adjustment when you get, yeah, it's really tough. If I had said to you, Don Barrett would have two strikes through nine frames, when this match started, you wouldn't have believed it, would you? No, oh, I mean, and not for the way he's bowled, he's really played nicely this game. So, Barnes looking to just shut the door, lock it and throw away the key. And that's it, that, that's pretty much done. I mean, he only needs four pins to win the match, and that's only if Dom strikes, which we haven't seen since the third frame. Well, you know, now that it's too late, Don Barrett will get a strike. Oh, that's automatic. I mean, that, that that's is, hard work. Yeah, there, there it, is. it is. There it is. We called it. Arm things loose. There's no pressure, and that's what happens. And, and he he just stepped straight up, picked up the ball, and just let it rip. Yeah. Didn't care. Got the swing loose. Free wheeled it to a strike. Yeah. Two twelve for Barrett. Not good enough for Chris Barnes. Well, again, he doesn't sign off very well. It'll be very interested to hear his post-match interview. He's always positive and upbeat, and he'll be happy to get the win, of course. But I don't think he'll be too happy with this. It'll be very interesting to hear what his take on the lane is, because he's chosen this lane pack, and it is creating a lot of headaches all round. So, it's back-to-back -back wins in this evening session. That was a bit of a voyage into the unknown, though, for both the skippers. Can you believe Don Barrett ended up with five nine spares in a row and not a bad shot between them either? When you've got luck like that, you don't have any chance. Further frustration for Team Europe and their captain, Don Barrett, who's now talking to Hannah Wilkes. Where do you go from here? 12-4 down. What are you saying to the team? How do you keep morale up? Well, we had a good chat before, and it's, you know, we, we need 15 points to win. And you think about it that way, they need nine, now they need seven. It's actually still a big hill for them to get up, up and it's even bigger for us. But, you know, no one's even close to winning this yet. But that's pretty much what we've been saying. We need to uh, figure this out. And unfortunately for me there, it's one of those uh, cases where the more you try to strike, the less chance you have. And I kind of put myself under pressure when I got the eight, eight miss. That one pin was actually quite big with the count. Uh, and then you kind of feel like, you have to make that up and then you know, obviously you saw the 10 pins that was created from there and then the 9 pin and you basically just get yourself trapped and that's pretty much happened to me but hopefully I've got it out of the way and the rest of the team can find a way to strike. And the matches go so quickly really don't they? You don't have a lot of time to recover. No that's right, it happens really quick. I mean we're talking about the oil pattern but we're all really good bowlers, the best in the world and the pattern doesn't really matter, it's more about the occasion and kind of the pressure you put yourself under and your, for your team as well trying to get yourself out of that hole and get yourself into the, you know, into the right momentum and getting everything else going as well. And then you just kind of try that a little bit too hard and then you see how more relaxed the USA team are and the pins fall over for them and we're, we're trying to make them fall over. That's probably the worst we can do at the moment. So trying to find a way just to relax a little bit, try and just let it happen and then good things will happen from there. It's all about relaxation. Good luck, Tom. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> 16 matches now played at this year's Weber Cup and America have won 12 of them. Can Stuart Williams and Jesper Svensson halt the slide in their singles games? We'll find out next time when the biggest event in Team Tempin continues.